Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. As you know, I'm always on the lookout, looking for people on the cutting edge, doing interesting things, and always thinking about freedom in terms of time, financial, location, health. So uh, today I have a special guest, Seisha Rogers, and she's a mental health, fitness, nutrition, and health expert. So um, she's a she's worked as a licensed therapist for over a decade. And so for all the professionals out there, it's going to be really interesting conversation. And today's talking all about habits, going all in, innovating, pivoting, and and being resilient. So with that, I'm happy to welcome Seisha to the show. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, I know we had connected through Podmatch. And um, so tell everybody about how you got started, uh, your story, and we'll go from there. Which part is always the question. So as you shared with everyone. I've been in uh, the mental health field for over 10 years. Professionally, that's my background. And during COVID, I had my, uh, my first little one. So he's almost three. And I decided to completely pivot as far as working in the mental health field and doing more coaching, which is where my passion lies, being able to combine the things that I'm really passionate about. Um, I had dabbled in it and my partner had been pushing me to make that transition. And I was just so nervous and so scared. And so COVID was all these blessings in disguise. And it really pushed me out of my comfort zone and forced me to take that leap. And I have been full on remote coaching and focusing with my clients on all those topics that you discussed um, since then. So it's been great. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Uh, you know, I think basically COVID forced everybody to just snap out of it, wake up and see what's going on and what's really going on. Um, and, uh, you know, I love these stories where people out of COVID started new companies, businesses, they did career changes. So, um, Mm -hmm. you know, what's interesting is that, um, you talk about, um, uh, changing your habits saved your life and, There's a great book, Atomic Habits, but I want the audience to listen to your side and how they can incorporate it into their lives. So I realized even from a professional standpoint, for me, I was so burnt out, even in the career that I was in. Um, I was, I think even now it's so, it's such an issue that so many healthcare workers are completely burnt out, um, even after the pandemic. But this is not something new that's been going on. Um, I had a really high stress job and my habits were crappy at the same time is I realized that I needed to take a step back and start prioritizing and taking care of myself first in order to really be happy, have more of the freedom that I wanted to have in my health in my family my relationships, and then also in business. So really just started stacking some good habits that were, that I feel like are at the foundation for everyone and have been really successful in the process. So thank you for that. Yeah. And so like, tell us, um, you know, some of your, to elaborate for the audience, what were some of Mm -hmm. the habits before and some of the things that you incorporated, you know, either diet, you know, meditation, all of that, maybe they can incorporate that into their lives. So for me, even personally, part of my daily routine and rituals is I work out or I move every single day, um, paying attention, of course, to my nutrition and fueling my body appropriately. So that way I have the energy that I need to juggle two little ones around in business and working from home and all that good stuff. Um, and then I do actually practice gratitude. I believe in practicing gratitude before your feet even hit the floor. Oh. And so as soon as you wake up in the morning, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just, you know, be able to say out loud two to three things that you're grateful for before you're starting your day. That's my sense of like meditation and gratitude. Oh. Um, I have a 16 week old. So even right now, it's, my schedule has changed a little bit. I don't have a lot of time, extra time laying around. Oh. Um, reading is super important to me. 
I used to read in the mornings and that's transitioned to reading in the evenings before I go to bed. But all those things, being able to dedicate time into my personal health, my nutrition, my personal development, all those core areas, I call them buckets when I'm coaching. Uh Being able to fill those buckets is extremely important in order for me to be able to be successful and feel like I'm accomplishing every single day. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, uh, you know, I talk to a lot of people and, you know, really, you know, movement is really important and mm-hmm. really, you know, getting your, um, your heart rate up into the, and working it out, uh, makes you feel better, look better. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, nutrition as well, eating clean, you talk about overcoming fear and going all in on yourself. And, you know, a lot of the Mm -hmm. audience there, they are interested. Well, you know, they're, you know, they've had successful careers, but then they're looking for more. It's not what they wanted. And they're looking for more like meaning. So tell us um, your experience or any advice about overcoming fear and, you know, going all in. The way I was raised is having, you know, a nine to five job what is the safe way it's the secure way and so i really had to break through a lot of limiting beliefs that that was that's the way that i believed it was supposed to be you know that security that control and so i had to overcome the fear and the uncomfortability that came with going all in on myself and even going out and sharing my story and being part of things like this culturally i was raised in a family that was also very private and Mm. you know it's you don't share so much of yourself with others Mm -hmm. and i have found that that is the most beneficial thing is being able to share and be able to show people that it's like i can relate to exactly what you're going through and i've worked on myself and so that's how i know that i can help you work on yourself Um, and so being able to break through a lot of those barriers and the fear that comes with being vulnerable being open being okay with the potential of failing is scary for a lot of people. It's super uncomfortable. And that's exactly what it's going to take in order for you to get to where you want to go, whether it's mentally, professionally, with your health, you're going to screw up. Mm. Yeah. And it's really interesting. I think, especially, you know, we know we always reference COVID uh, and I always reference 2008 because that's kind of like, that was like the turning point where you couldn't trust governments or banks and all these higher institutions. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, for a lot of people it's 2020, but, um, you know, uh, th- even the nine to five route is not safe anymore because, you know, no. I mean, so why, 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 you know, why are people going nine to five? Cause it's the safe route, but, you know, but then you're just losing out mm-hmm. on all your, all this other opportunity. So, um, I think now is the best time, especially, you know, everything, nothing is guaranteed for sure. So, um, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, talking about, um, uh, you know, you've had, you know, fam, you've had challenges. Tell us about how these challenges have made you uh, better. And especially for um, the female entrepreneurs, you know, in the audience, you know, what advice would you give to them? I'd say stay true to yourself and then also be okay with allowing yourself to make yourself a priority and to do what you want to do. Mm Because I think it's so much for females, especially as we we want to make other people happy and we put a lot of other people's needs before ourself. Uh, I talked to so many women that even from a nutritional standpoint, like, well, I just don't eat or I forget to eat or I just grab something. I'm like, well, you don't forget to feed your kids, do you? Like. No, I'm like, okay, then why do you forget to take care of yourself? And I think it just all stems from us wanting to make other people happy. And you need to be able to take a step back, look at yourself, what's going to make you happy? What do you really want? And it's okay to share that and to say that, whether that's very surface level or it's layers deep, it's like, it's all okay. And so being able to go all in on yourself can be extremely scary in whatever way that may be but it's completely what's necessary in order for you to get to where you want to go yeah yeah i i I love that and really um you also talk about saying no and uh what's interesting is Mm -hmm. uh 
this there's this saying the power of no and then no tell us more about the power of saying no and speaking up we all need to say no a lot more i feel like how many times have you been in a situation where somebody asks you to do something <laughs> and in your mind look like, i really don't want to do that but somehow yes comes out of your your mouth <laughs> and I think we've all been there we're probably there every single day and it's taking a second to actually listen to that little voice that's telling you there's a reason why you don't want to do something whether it's being in a certain environment you don't have the time for it it really doesn't line up with who you are and so allowing yourself to take a second and listen to that voice and then say no um, and i this is a challenge for all of your listeners and even for you is Say no to something every single day. You have to practice it. We have to practice saying no and even just the littlest things. And say no first. You can always go back and say yes if you want. But be able to be like, let me have a second to think about that or I'll get back with you. That's an okay answer. It doesn't have to be yes or no right away. But give yourself that opportunity to really find out is this something that you want to do or not? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because um, there's a really great quote is like, if, they, if you say yes, then, then basically you're saying no to a thousand, you know, a thousand different opportunities. But if you say no, you're saying yes to a thousand or you're saying you're opening yourself up to more opportunities, which is really insightful. And, um, you know, really, we just have to, there's a great book, I think, um, uh, she, she talks about, you know, saying no and boundaries and really Mm -hmm. you know, protecting your energy and you know, really yep. staying intentional being aligned um, not getting distracted so uh, you know it all stems from this idea of uh, sit learning how to say no um, mm -hmm. i think if we say no we we're saying yes to ourselves in other ways so when somebody offers you that piece of cake it's uh -huh. not that we don't all love cake mm -hmm. it's just being able to say no thank you then respect that that you have to say that because you're saying yes to multiple other things in regards to your health that you may be working towards. Yeah, yeah. Great conversation. Um, I know a lot of uh, moms, uh, people out there be interested in learning more about you, hearing about you and um, you know, reaching out to you. So how can they do that? So on Instagram and even on YouTube, it's Sasha underscore fit counselor. That's my handle in there. And then I'm also on Facebook as just Sasha Rogers. Um, there's applications uh, in my bios that you can apply for coaching. I like to say that we we apply with each other. We have to both be a good fit. So I'd love to be able to talk and meet with plenty of other women that want to improve their physical and their mental fitness. Yeah. And for all the listeners out there, uh, be sure to check out Sasha's resources will be which will be in the links and show notes be sure to follow her on all the social media platforms she's on youtube instagram facebook and with that thanks so much Seisha, and thanks for coming on to the show thank you so much for having me it's been fun